just a warning, there are going to be a lot of A220s in this video. Seriously, a lot. You can still call them C-Series if you want, that's fine. I think I've heard A220 so many times now that I've been converted. Anyway, I think we can mostly agree it's a really fantastic airplane. So good morning from Riga. Or should I say Innsbruck? Once in a while, I get invited to fly a simulator and it is so much fun. This is Air Baltic's A220 simulator at their training facility just next to Riga International. But as far as this system is concerned, we are currently taking off from the rather short runway at Innsbruck in Austria. And now we're going to try out a landing. Get down and flaps four. Flaps four. Yep. 500. I've just come in on the A220 jump seat from Tenerife the night before, so it's extra fun to sit in the captain's seat and give it a go for myself. In case you missed that video, you can click the banner up top to watch. 100. 50. 30. 20. 10. Luckily I didn't have any passengers because that felt as if it might have upset a few of them. But hey, I got the plane on the ground. Like we are safe. A little bit of weaving on the runway made the passengers <laughs> ill, but... That's so bad for a first time flying A220, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it looked like it was definitely <laughs> said. <laughs> this is actually very easy. It is actually. It's easy to fly this. But even with the engine out, I mean, you don't even feel that. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks yeah. so much. <laughs> They've got cabin mock-ups for flight attendant training here too. And classrooms where the cadets are just starting out the process to become Air Baltic pilots. They have 32 A220s in their fleet now and that's only going to grow. I pay a visit to the operations center, and as I've found with several other airlines, Flight Radar 24 is an integral part of what they do. That's always fun to see. It seems that it's, it's ready for taxi, so we are on time, everything is good. And yeah. also to see, uh, regarding the weather, we, we can see what other companies are doing, especially on the evening flights where in Tallinn and Vilnius there is a runway reconstruction going on, so we can see. And if the weather is close to the limits, we can see what other companies are doing. Martis, what's up? Nice, buddy. It's quite a nice and compact HQ they have here. On my visit, it's still pretty empty because of a number of people working from home. But why don't we get out there and check out some real planes? Riga's ramp is of course dominated by Air Baltic aircraft, but there are some other interesting visitors here alongside. Like this Aviastar Tu-204 cargo plane, for example. There are also quite a few now retired Dash 8s still sitting around. Looks like the special Latvia livery A220 is getting ready to depart. I'll actually be flying this same aircraft back to Arlanda later this evening, after it gets back from shuttling passengers to and from Zurich. Here's a 737 cargo plane operated by Atran Airways, part of Russia's Volga Dnepr group, and it's registered in Bermuda. You see that a lot with Russian fleets, actually. Bonus points for anyone who knows why. Post your answer in the comments.
And now, please enjoy a little driving ramp tour airside at Riga International. A220 is just so pretty, even in this terrible weather. Here's Gatis Stanga, Air Baltic's senior cabin crew, to show us around the plane. Overhead wings, as you can see, they are quite huge. And uh, even with full aircraft, we have never issue with bags. So all passengers have space for their bags. And uh, under the seat, it's a very rare case when they need to put something. As you see, we have mood lights. You know, cabins, so we have around 28 to 30 different scenarios which can be used for different phases of flight for takeoff, landing, boarding. We have special for Christmas, also for uh, independent day of Latvia, we have red and white scenario. So we can take out the trolley. And um, if you will try it, so very easy to pass the hail, so it's as on the white body aircraft. And as a standard, we have three cabin crew during the flight in the cabin, but we have also one spare jump seat for additional cabin crew if necessary for special charter flights or such stuff. So it's uh, new, uh, brand new this uh, coffee machines we have, so and uh, ovens, and this atmosphere gives more enjoyable for cabin crew. And here are a few thoughts from Air Baltic CEO Martin Gauss. I should note that this was recorded in late October last year, but while there have been some pandemic curveballs since then, his points still stand. Yeah, originally the business plan said we would be changing once our Q400s will leave us. That was 20, end of 22, beginning of 23. With the pandemic, the first decision was to ground this fleet, which is still here on the apron, but uh, we are not using them anymore. Uh, we also uh, sold our remaining Boeings also as a step in, in 2020 with the start of the pandemic. And that was a very wise step because we reduced our fleet from 40 aircraft to only 22. Uh, that helped us starting again. Now we had 32 aircraft but same fleet, so we retrained all the personnel, we simplified all the processes, so better product for the customer but also for us um, a better product because much easier to handle and all the positive effects now coming uh, months by month stronger uh, because we only focus on that one aircraft type. So it has been a, has been a good decision to bring it forward uh, and everyone's happier with that decision. I was always optimistic, it was just a crisis. I said that from the beginning, uh, I never thought that this just would be so long, uh, but it is a crisis and it is not an, a new status quo. So we will have a change to the current situation, but it was a, a very heavy crisis. We have gone through this difficult time, we are here, we get good uh, feedback from the market of what we're doing. And um, coming out of this final part of the crisis or pandemic, um, we will see that we will have it much easier in the future to grow further than it was before this crisis, because a very united uh, team with a very efficient aircraft, which can for many years be a, a backbone of what Air Baltic does. Thank you. 
But enough of the ground level footage. It's time to fly home. Here's my ride back from Zurich and pulling into the gate. And I'm back up here in the front row left hand side, which if you watched the previous video you'll already know is the place to be. It's about an hour over to Stockholm, a quick hop over the Baltic Sea. Every other time I did this flight in the past, it was on the Q400. Feels luxurious to do it in the A220. I always love how picking up speed on the runway clears the water off the windows, improving the view. And I also love how when taking off at this time on a cloudy day, altitude will buy you a little bonus daylight. Champagne on a sub one hour flight in Europe? Yes, please. Though with these bumps, let's see how much I end up spilling. In fact, the fantastic flight attendant offered me a second mini bottle later on. Completely unnecessary, but much appreciated. Of course I said yes. And there was a nice light meal. Again, a very pleasant surprise on such a short flight. Thanks again for joining me. Hope to see you back here next week for more fun with airplanes. In Stockholm for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.